This video is for the Parker University Animal Chiropractic class. My name is Jesse Green, and this part of the class covers ethics and legal considerations. Let me start by congratulating you on taking the Animal Chiropractic class. For the veterinarians who are seeking to learn new types of therapies to provide better service to their animals, I respect your commitment to your patients. For the chiropractors, I respect that you're looking for the opportunity to help animals as well as humans with chiropractic care. Some of you may know me already because I have taught at Parker for a few years. For those of you who don't, I'm an attorney, not a chiropractor or a veterinarian. I've practiced law in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex since 1986. Parker University has been one of my clients for the majority of that time so I'm familiar with chiropractic, and I've become familiar with animal chiropractic as the pro profession has developed. I've represented chiropractors, animal chiropractors, and veterinarians over the years, along with many other small business people. This class is designed for both chiropractors and veterinarians. Sometimes I will spend time covering an idea that may seem very obvious to you from your professional background. But remember that it may not be obvious to other people with different professional backgrounds and different levels of experience. Also keep in mind that this class includes students who are recent graduates or soon to be graduates of Parker University, as well as veterinarians and chiropractors who have been practicing for many years. As a result, I try to cover topics in a way that's understandable to somebody with very little experience but also going to be useful to somebody who may have a great deal of experience. The five basic topics we will cover in these videos are listed here. The first is ethics. How do you decide what is the right thing to do? How do you decide what you're required to do? And what are the rules that help you to make those decisions? We'll also talk about licensing, which is probably one of the more important topics for the chiropractors. Complying with the state rules about providing care to animals is critical. We'll also talk about informed consent. <clears throat> because animal chiropractic is considered an alternative therapy, doctors need to be more careful and sometimes more thorough about getting informed consent than in some other situations. We will also talk about malpractice claims. The good news for the chiropractors in the class is that the damages for veterinary malpractice for small animals like cats and dogs are very, very low compared to the damages that might be incurred treating human patients. That has the effect of greatly reducing the risk of any malpractice claim. Lastly, we're going to talk about record keeping and some of the rules that you should follow. Following those rules can help you provide good quality care for your patients and provide good communication between the chiropractors and veterinarians working together as well as the owners. Those records can also be very important to protect yourself in the event of a malpractice claim. I've divided this lecture into 14 videos. That should make it easier for you to take breaks as you listen. It will also allow you to replay or focus on topics that might be of special interest to you. The videos are also arranged in a playlist on YouTube so you can play them from start to finish if you prefer. I expect most of you will want to take at least a few breaks. All the videos together cover about three hours a time. Of course, this video is the overview. In the next video, we will talk about ethics. And then in the third, fourth, and fifth videos, we'll talk about the licensing rules and the supervision required by those rules. Generally, when the chiropractic care for animals is provided by someone other than a veterinarian, some supervision by a veterinarian is going to be necessary. In the sixth video, we will talk about informed consent 
And while we're talking about communication, we will talk in the seventh video about responding to errors. What should you do if something goes wrong? In the eighth video, we'll talk about advertising. Now, this can be a particularly difficult issue for chiropractors who become animal chiropractors. Advertising without violating the rules uh, for practicing veterinary medicine can be a very difficult uh, and narrow road to walk. In the ninth and tenth videos, we'll talk about malpractice and the damages in veterinary malpractice cases. The eleventh video deals with some rules in Texas that apply to livestock shows that may help protect you from some liability. And then finally, in the twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth videos, we're going to talk about record keeping and the rules that you should follow in your record keeping. So with that, let's move on to the topic of ethics.